From the budget hearings, we are seeing how the state has to live within its means. So can we continue to provide the kind of social programs so many people count on? Joining us now is New Jersey's Commissioner of Human Services, Jennifer Velas. It's good of you to come on in. Are these tough times these in are. your department? These are very tough times. They've been so for a couple of years. What, how do we see it? Where does it manifest itself? I think it manifests itself more so in we've had our lowest income residents and we have programs for them in place we have for a number of years. We're seeing and we have seen for the past couple of years some, some residents with higher incomes being impacted by what has been really a long-standing recession. Now coming out of it a little bit, but the effects are still being felt. More people needing to avail themselves of the services? More people needing to avail themselves of services, increased need for child care, for subsidized health insurance. Um, people need programs to go back to work and that's really what we've been working on. Because of money issues higher thresholds for people to qualify? We've actually increased the food stamp eligibility threshold uh, a couple of years ago from 150 to 185 percent of poverty. It actually was in response to a need that was out there. So more people can now qualify for food stamps, which for some people is the first time that they've ever had to avail themselves of a social program. Do you see things getting better or worse? I see things getting better. I do. It's slow, but I think I've been around long enough in government to really see things are actually getting a little bit better. There's a little bit. There's more hope out there that we're being smarter with our resources and being very deliberate. Sometimes saying no to some things has been a very, um, a very good experience to hear that you just can't have everything. You've got to really limit your choices and make them smart choices, and that's what we've been doing. What's the toughest decision you've had to make in this position? The toughest decision, there are so many. We cover the Department of Human Services only serves people. So it's, I mean, we're the largest department. So it's people who are blind, uh, deaf and hard of hearing, people who need Medicaid, mental health services, addiction services, people with developmental disabilities. So it's really been the tough choices of how to really allocate among those um, populations what they need. I'd have to give that one some thought. Well, we'll let you, we'll let you do that in the process. Yeah. But in terms of, you have, what, what 15,000? 15,000, and it actually grow a little bit because we're shifting around some of the um, way we serve people in government. So there's some senior services that are now, that are today with the Department of Health and Senior Services that will be coming over to us. And that will grow our department in terms of employees. But more to the point, it'll be a smarter decision in how we deliver services. How so? How does it make it better? It makes it so much better because we have Medicaid in our department. And Medicaid serves um, low-income individuals, and it serves age-blind and disabled individuals. And to bring over the seniors into us will allow them, we could really um, leverage Medicaid resources to serve them to hopefully keep people in their home or in their community and not have them only resort to a nursing home. And so to leverage those Medicaid dollars in one department smartly um, will serve them better. There was talk early this year about what the state would be doing in terms of trying to get those matching funds out of the federal government. How much are we going to get? We don't know how much we're going to get, but it is the single best thing that I think I've worked on, which is a Medicaid comprehensive waiver. It is taking our state Medicaid program and really um, requesting of the federal government to A, match some of our state resources so we can stretch that dollar. In New Jersey's case, twice as far. We get on most things a 50% match. Um, and it'll allow us to, to really expand the breadth of services that we offer because we can really do it much more smartly and um, I think in a coordinated fashion. When will you know? what you're going to get. Shortly. I mean, waivers oftentimes take um, a long time. This has been, relatively speaking, pretty quickly, but they have um, I couldn't uh, fault the process at all. It's been very constructive with CMS, and that's our um, federal agency. How do you budget with that kind of uncertainty? You have to, um, I mean, that's a good question. We, we've done some concurrent planning. So while we're asking the federal government for permission, because it requires permission to stand up, for example, manage long-term care, once they say yes, we, you can't turn that on a dime. You have to plan to do that. So that planning is underway right now. And it's really teeing up to the point of them saying yes so that we can unveil this to the state. All right. Well, let's check back and see how that all works out. Our time Thank has you. gone too quickly. Commissioner, thanks for coming in. Thanks so much.